Vince Cardello dead, run Washington in critical condition. I just hope he suffers a lot and then he dies. Now, well, now, Babs. The guy tried to kill me, tried to kidnap me. I know. I know, and I don't have a whole lot of sympathy for him either, but I don't take any pleasure in his physical suffering. It'll be just fine with me if he pulls through and they send him away for 99 years. Yeah, well, the taxpayers deserve more than that. I just wish that a stray bullet or two had found Lance, too. Mm. I wonder if he was even there. I wonder where he's at now. Far away from here, you can be sure of that. No, I can't. Anybody else, but not Lance. Well, come on, Babs. The police got an all-points bulletin out on him. He'd be crazy to still be here in Kingsley. Hey, the fact that I am still alive is enough reason for him to want revenge. You really think that he'd be... Yeah, yeah, I do. I'm what you'd call unfinished business. You know, it's crazy, isn't it? I mean, all this time, I've been hanging on thinking that if I could just get those copies to the prints, then I'd be, I'd be safe. Now the only difference is uh, there's two down and one to go. Babs, that's not the only difference. Ronnie Washington, if he pulls through, is going straight to prison. And Lance, I guarantee you'll be right behind him. Have a little faith. <laughs> you sound like I own. Something wrong with that? Coming from you, yeah. I don't know. I, I guess I've just been on the run too long, and it makes me nervous, that's all. You're right. I'm just, I'm being too careful. Now, how do I say this without coming across like some imbecile? Say what? Well, Babs, taking everything into consideration, I, I, I just think it might be better if you laid low here for just a couple of days longer. So this has all just been a big show of optimism? No, 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 no. It's just that, well, it's like you said, Lance is very unpredictable. Until he is caught, I think it would be better just not to take any chances. Well, thanks for 10 seconds of happiness. It's just temporary, Babs, really. It, uh, it shouldn't take any more than a couple of days. Yeah, sure. Really, it shouldn't take any more than that. Now, come on. What about that Russ guy you were telling me about? Who, Vince's son? Yeah. Do you think he's going to give me any problems or anything? I don't know. No, I don't think so. Well, how do you know? Well, for one thing, if he's got any sense about him at all, he's going to be a long way from here, too, and... Besides, if he does know about you, it's got to be through Vince, and you tried to help him. <laughs> Looks like I tried to help him stand in front of a bullet. I mean, according to this article that Gene wrote here, they found those copies of the books that I made of Ronnie's double books on the scene, and he thinks that's what caused the whole shooting. Yeah, his son is going to be real crazy about me. Now, right as now. you listen to me, you're going to drive yourself crazy if you keep dwelling on all the things that could go wrong. No, I'm going to go crazy if I have to stay in this room much longer. Why don't you just let me go see Miriam? Well, that might be safe enough. The problem is going to be getting around Charles. He has had some, uh, things to say about you in the past. That's a piece of cake. After all, it's Miriam's house, too, isn't it? I'll see if I can arrange something. Okay. And in the meantime, you just stay right here and sit tight, and I will give you a call as soon as I know something, okay? Okay, but I won't take no for an answer. You're really worth all this trouble. Yeah, I am. I know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, honey, Lord, I'm so 
so glad to have you home. Mom, I thought you would still be asleep. Oh, well, then you didn't want me to start now, did you? Well, I told you not to wait up for me. Well, it's a little hard with you out all night long chasing gangsters. Well, don't tell me Carla's still up as well. Well, she just went to bed, so be quiet. Let's talk in the all kitchen. Right. All right. Now, what happened? Oh, uh, it's right there in print, Mom. Oh, I want to hear from you, Gene. I... Mom, is there any more of this here? Gene Redlin. Mom, please, I'm hungry. Come on. Well, here, take mine. I just sat down when you heard the door. Thanks. Now, uh, Appreciate this. talk while you eat. Food in my mouth? You know what you said about that. You told me you never want me to do that kind uh, of thing. Look away. What happened? Well, I must tell you, the whole thing was pretty gruesome. When we got there, Vince Cardello was dead. Oh, Lord have mercy. So, uh, and that other fellow, Ronnie Washington? Shot in the chest, but he's alive. Well, is he going to make it? I don't know. It's too soon to tell. Those men brought so much misery and violence to people. Did they really expect it to end any other way? Well, probably not, Mom. I think that, you know, both of them knew more than anyone else the kind of realities in this business that they were in. Mm. That kind of living has its own just rewards, I guess. Well, tell me, was anybody else involved? No. Uh, Lance and Russ weren't there at the time. Or were they involved in the shooting? Well, no, Mom, that's kind of hard to tell, too. John said that he's, you know, he's got to wait until he gets the results back from the lab. And apparently, it seems like Ronnie and Vince, they shot each other. Oh, such going on. Well, I'm glad that's over with. At least Miriam's safe and Babs can come out of hiding. Yeah, maybe. Oh, I don't like that tone. What do you mean, maybe? Mm, I don't know. I was just thinking. You know, Vince Cardello was the prince, but now that he's dead, there's probably going to be a lot of reshuffling around and powers down there to see who's going to succeed. Now, I'd give anything if I could find Oh, out exactly... no, 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 no. You're going to stay as far away from that story as you possibly can if I have to speak to Mr. McGovern myself. Now, one brush with death is enough. You've got a family and Carla to think about, and I don't even want to hear any more about it. You know, one morning, I'd like to come down here and just beat you down here. <laughs> it will never happen. <laughs> so you couldn't sleep either, huh? No. Well, your daughter certainly could. Nothing seems to disturb her rest. Ben, you know she's still using sleep as a refuge. Yeah, I know. And I'm a little sick of it. It was all I could do to keep from rolling over last night at 3 o'clock in the morning and shaking her awake. I wanted her to experience the same feeling of frustration that I was enjoying. I'm sorry. You know, there was a time when you two had a rule that you would never go to bed angry with one another. Uh huh. Yeah, I remember that. That was way back there when there used to be a little substance to our marriage. Terry, she doesn't understand how I feel. I don't know what to do to snap her out of this delusion that she's carrying another man's child. She just doesn't listen to me anymore. You know, I remember the first time I ever told a patient that she was pregnant. Oh, that, that was such a wonderful experience. The look of joy on her face. And she called her husband in from the waiting room, and they hugged, and they laughed, and they cried. And, and I remember thinking, yes, yes, that's exactly the way it should be. And that's how I wanted it to be for us. She's robbed me of that, Terry. All the joy that I want to feel over my firstborn child has been buried under this manufactured hysteria. Every time I start to feel something, she just stomps it out. Man, don't let that happen. This is your child. You are entitled to be proud and happy. Mm -hmm. Well, are you proud? Have you gone around boasting that you're going to be a grandmother? Well, no, I haven't. Well, then. She's gotten to you, too. Honest. Our mother raises her son. She tries to teach him a little sense. And what does he do? Goes out intentionally looking for trouble. Mm. Well, that same mom also told me to do whatever I could to help the little guy. And by exposing Ronnie and Vince, I think a lot of people were helped. But still, a lot more people could be helped, too, if I could just put my finger on who might succeed the prince. I think that, well, you know, if I could just expose him in the public's eye, then might restrict his activities. Oh, Jean, let the police do it. Oh, Mom, come on. You can tell me that they can't use a little help? Jean, would you just stop talking about it? The whole thing makes me nervous. Mm. You know, I was wondering if he could be a son. But somehow, he just doesn't strike me as the type. You mean the boy who let you and Miriam go? Yep, Russ Weaver. I have no doubt in my mind that he's 
was probably involved with a lot of his father's activities, but I, just how much, I don't know. <laughs> he used to work at Kingsley General, too, with Terry. You better believe it. He was the one who fired him. That's right. He's the one that caused all that problem down there, huh? Mm -hmm. My goodness. Eventually got himself fired. Which just goes to show you how immature he was, yeah. and not really a hardened criminal. Mm, I don't know. I still say it's behavioral problems. Do you know he once uh, was engaged to Laurie Davison? I understand now he's dating Marianne Prescott. Isn't that something? What? Now, who would have figured that? Yes, two lovely girls like that being associated with somebody who's involved with something illegal. Mm. Just goes to show you how deceitful our hearts can be when we think we're in love. When we think we're in love? We? Mm. Wow, Mom. Oh. You saying something that I don't Jean know about? Gene Redland. <laughs> You know, it would be idle speculation for you to put into print that Russ Weaver is a hardened criminal. Mom, you do not have to worry about that. I did not even mention the guy's name in the article. Good. Brubaker said hold off on it. Besides, the facts only point to, I mean, all Russ did was help out. Well, he did save your life. Well, yeah, he did. And I guess if I had to make some kind of opinion, I'd say that through family ties and, and whatever, I mean, he got himself involved in something that he just couldn't get out of. I just hope the police catch up with him, because I'd like to talk to him. Mm. Whoa! Speaking of which, I've got to get out of this place, Mama. I'm what? sorry. Where? Yeah, you... i got to get back to the police station. But you haven't had an escape, Mom, there are more important things. Oh, oh my God. More, more than, important than Carla? You haven't seen her in two days. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh. Well, Mom, Carla's just going to have to understand. I've talked to a lot of people about this, and I don't want to let the thing get away from me. Jane, I think you're making a big mistake. A big mistake? You always say, hey, I haven't done too badly so far. So far? Uh-huh. I'll tell you what. I'm going to sneak upstairs, clean up a little bit, and I will call Carla later. Promise. Promise. You call her and get an airfall. <laughs> yeah, it looks like the Kingsley Breakfast Club started without me. But I am just in time for the best bathrobe competition. Ladies and gentlemen, for the third day in a row, the winner is Mr. Peter Davidson. Thank you, thank you. I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> okay, hey, you know what? If you're going to be a serious contender, the hood has got to go. You look like one of the seven dwarves. We'll say which one. Uh, I'll speak to my tailor, Snow White. <laughs> okay, the winner feels like um, French toast. Uh, has the winner got something wrong with his arms and legs? He can't fix his own breakfast? You, my dear, are a sore loser. Hey, what kind of major decisions have we made today? Well, I guess it's time to practice what we preach. Yeah, I think so. Peter? Yeah? I've got some interesting news for you. Mm-hmm. You're gonna be an uncle. What? I hear right? Yeah. You mean like uh, little munchkins running around here? <laughs> well, yeah, that's one way of putting it. Hey. But we won't get to the munchkin phase for a while yet. Then you don't. <laughs> Congratulations. Thanks. Hey, Mom, what do you think of that, huh? We're gonna be uncles. Uh, your grasp of the situation is astounding, kid. Yeah, yeah. Okay, now, look no further. I have the name for you. If it's a boy, Peter. If it's a girl, Petra. Petra. Perfect, huh? Yes, and totally selfless. Yeah, well, no, really. Seriously, congratulations, and uh, I'm sure Lori's totally thrilled, huh? Peter, why don't you have a seat? Something wrong? Yeah, you might see that. Uh, you see, Lori hasn't really taken too well to the news. Morning sickness. No, no. Um, she doesn't think the baby's mine. Oh, hold it now. Did I hear you right? Hold it. You heard right. You know how she's always insisting that she was raped that night? She thinks... Oh, that's impossible, isn't it? Of course it is. Well, how long has she known this? Well, for a little while now. Well, if it happened around the night she was attacked, wouldn't she be showing? Yes, if you look carefully, she is. But with the trauma of the attack, she's lost a lot of weight, and therefore it's not that noticeable. Peter, because of what she's thinking right now, we're asking you to be very discreet. But be happy with us, Peter, because it's not Blue Noble's baby, it's Ben's. Yeah, sure. And I think it would be a wise thing if you didn't say anything to her unless she mentions it, okay? Hello? Terry Isayo. Well, good morning. Well, I hope I'm not calling too early. Nope, not at all. 
Good. I thought you might enjoy hearing a bit of good news. Yeah, what's that? Miriam came back to us last night. What? You're kidding! No, I'm not. It's all there in the morning newspaper. Peter, quick, run outside and get the paper. I own says Miriam's safe. <gasps> Tell me what happened. Well, it seems that she was being held by kidnappers after all. In fact, it was that Ronnie Washington, you know, the one that was after Babs. Well, how did she get away? Well, it's all in Jean's story. You know, I'm afraid if I tell you, I'll do a bit too much of boasting here. <laughs> but anyway, Jean had an awful lot to do with it. But the important thing is now that she's safe. Oh, praise God, that is wonderful. Well, where is she now? Well, she's at her father's house. Is she allowed to have visitors? She better be. <laughs> no way in the world you're gonna keep me out of there. Oh, thank the Lord, mm. she's all right. Oh, amen to that, Terry. Terry, I tell you, the Lord surely had his hand on her. You know, all those weeks her life was hanging in the balance like that, she just seemingly came through it just like gold. God was answering our prayers, even when we didn't know it. Oh, I tell you, there's a lesson in that for all of us. Well, Gil, you have now delivered me safe and sound, and I don't see that it was necessary. Well, I've just noticed quite a few suspicious characters hanging around here lately. So I thought it'd be a good idea if I walked it to your doorstep. And I don't suppose you consider yourself in that group? Me? Well, of course not. As a matter of fact, I think it would be a good idea if I checked out all the bedrooms, just to make sure they're safe and sound, of course. Are you trying to tell me that uh, our night at the King's Arms Hotel wasn't enough for you? Well, if you really want to know, uh... Look, I enjoyed our night at the King's Arms as much as you did. Good. The recess is over. It's time to get back to work. But us executive types, we do deserve a morning off once in a while, right? Not if we want to stay executive types. No. Besides, Mother's in the next room. I don't think so. What do you mean? Amber. Leah's invited me to breakfast, which I couldn't refuse. Call you later, Mom. <laughs> the answer's still no. Oh, come on. You know, you know what's wrong with you? You have no sense of adventure, Miss Phillips. Timing, Gil. <laughs> it's all in the timing. Yeah. Oh, hi, Stace. Hi. Is Mom up yet? Up and gone. Oh, hi. Gone where? Hi. Gone to breakfast with Lee. Is that by her design or by yours? Hers this time. This time? An appropriate choice of words. Stacy, are we really trying to hide what each of us is trying to do here? I think it is fairly obvious, isn't it? What's really obvious, Stacy, is the fact that your reconciliation plans are just not going to work out. I mean, uh, the more Mother sees of Lee, the more she's not going to want to see Daddykins. Miss Mason attributes her remarkable mental stability after so long an ordeal to her faith and trust in Jesus. It was rough at times, she said, and I certainly had my doubts and fears. But it's funny, I almost always found myself in prayer, sometimes just automatically. I can't begin to describe the peace and strength that it gave me. I trusted in God, and he brought me through safely. Good for you, Miriam. Hi, everybody. Hi. Something wrong? No, honey, something's very right. They found Miriam. She's safe. They did? Let me see. Yeah, Jean found her. Isn't that incredible? When did all this happen? Last night. You know what? If I run upstairs now and get dressed, maybe I could stop by her father's house and pay her a visit before work. You don't think that'd be rude, do you? No, I think she'd love to see you. Okay, then I'm going to do it. <laughs> Blue Nobles? Blue Nobles was one of the men who kidnapped her? Yes, but he didn't hurt her at all, just like he can't hurt you anymore. He's dead, remember? Yes, I remember. But now poor Miriam's got to live with awful memories about that man for the rest of her life, just like me. No, Lori. She doesn't have to. She says in the article that her faith in God pulled her through. Now, maybe that man did try to hurt her, but it sounds to me like she's trying to hold on to the positives of the situation. You mean not like me? No, that's yes. not what I... Yes. Not like you, Lori. She's believing God can heal her emotional scars. She's willing to pick up the pieces and begin anew. She's willing to accept the love and the truth that her family and friends are offering her. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go get dressed for work. Why don't you just give up, Stacy? 
It's going to save you a lot of wasted energy and disappointment if you do. I don't think I will, Amber. Not yet, anyway. This fear you're not hiding very well indicates that my situation isn't as hopeless as you'd have me think. <laughs> Can you believe her? Fear? I'm not afraid of anything. Amber, have you... Either one of you ever realized that, uh, your mother just might want to be left alone? I mean, it might save a lot of uh, wear and tear on your relationship with each other. Lock the door on your way out. <laughs> you know, it sure gets cold in here sometimes. Man, maybe I should get one of these to keep me warm. <laughs> oh, Babs, honey. Isn't it wonderful? You can finally come out in the open. Yeah, well, it's not as simple as that. Well, what's the stopping you? Well, unfortunately, Lance is still on the loose. Oh, Gene said it's just a matter of time before the police catch up with him. Yeah, Harold says that too, but meanwhile, I have to lay low. Well, I can't think of any finer digs to do it in than this. Hmm. I suppose so. Hmm. What I'd really like to do, though, is to go and see Miriam. Oh, that's where I'm heading as soon as I get through visiting with you. Oh, take me with you, please. But I thought you said that Harold's... Well, never mind that. When did I always do what Harold told me? Listen, what he don't know won't hurt him. I think this one time you just ought to listen to him. Oh, Babs, honey, before you know it, you'll be back at my place and we'll all be a family again. I hope so, Ione. I really do. Oh, sweetheart. So